in our land. Father God, it seems like every time something like this happens, the, the scab gets ripped off over and over and over again. And we never really get to the healing that needs to happen. And we can talk about a lot of ways why, a lot of reasons why that is, dear Lord. But I believe that you gave us the formula right there in your word. And you simply said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves which says to me that the church needs to stop identifying itself as black church and white church we are the church I believe when justice occurs when injustice occurs against people they have a right biblically morally ethically and constitutionally to march for gather for pray for and demand without retaliation. I see young folk here that are just raring to go. But I want to say to you, in your process of wanting to go, do you know where you're going? Do you have a plan? That's the bigger purpose. Scared to live, scared to walk the streets, scared to wear a hoodie, because we're scared that we'll get mistreated. It's hard for us to get justice. The feeling has been calm. We have to stick together like a boy to his mom. Rest in peace to George Floyd. Players to your family, kids. When I think, it's like Rodney King all over again. But when they stop the violence and all the pain that's been causing, it's hard to kind of trust the system when their behavior is faulty. Black lives matter, that is what we say. But yet, all of us have been dying every day. The world is black and white when we're just trying to make it gray. After years of oppression, we don't know no other way. We're standing up for justice and everyone that we lost. Who's going to police the police when they're wrong? They've been let out on bail. I'm tired of that song because the melody's been playing in my mind all year long. But then I stopped to think, what if it's God's plan? I know some of y'all will probably never understand, but everything happens for a reason. Know he has a plan. We have to repent in order for him to heal this land. With all this hurt and pain, the mindset is to fight, but an eye for an eye never really makes it right because an eye for an eye will cause you to lose your sight. God gives us hope in the darkness when we can't see the light. This is going on for years. We could be close to the end. We have to keep God first and start to make our amends. We all want peace, but most of all, to be equal. The violence is continuous. It's going on like a sequel. We stand up for change, but yet many do not care. But God will never put more on us than we could bear. I won't say what you want to hear. I'll only speak the truth. But God, first and foremost, is the only way through. I understand the frustration and all the pain felt. This world is an iceberg that continues to melt. We've been through so much. Sometimes it seems we have no help. But in order to change the world, we must first change ourselves. that are 12 and under that this country doesn't love them because of the color of their skin? Can somebody tell me how I am supposed to share with my older brothers and father that I'm legitimately terrified of what lies ahead of them every time they leave the house? Is just going out for a jog going to jeopardize my safety? How can I carry a pack of Skittles in my own neighborhood and not be deemed as a threat? How many more times? that flooding every single social media platform that I have with information that regards the Black Lives Matter movement. I won't stop fighting until our war is won. So are you with me, Warrington? I, I hear y'all. I said, are you with me, Warrington? Rest in power to the victims who had their lives stolen from them, and I send infinite love and blessings to the family of those people. Black Lives Matter now and forever. Thank you. Dan, since we're here, let's talk about what happened in Minnesota to Mr. Floyd, okay? He was handcuffed behind his back, laying on his stomach, not resisting, not trying to escape, and deadly force was used on his neck. I think that's clear. There's nobody that can dispute 
those facts, right? Under Graham v. Connor, that's not justified in, in any sense. That's not reasonable in any sense, okay? So, when we had our conversation on Wednesday, you said you wanted to make the police force more um, diverse. So, what are your plans to do that? Like, are you about to go into recruiting or? Here right now. Yeah. We're, <laughs> well, so that's a great question because it's a real challenge for us, okay? Uh, we were talking about um, recently, we, we've gotten a lot of applications, probably close to 30 applications for two vacancies. Of those, vac of those applications, zero, zero were minorities. That's a problem. It's a problem that we have to self-reflect and wonder what are we doing wrong that are pushing people away or why don't people feel comfortable they wanna come and be police officers in this very noble profession. So we gotta ask ourselves that. It's tough. But I think one of the things we can do is bringing folks in early. Uh, Tiana is going to be doing an internship with our police department. Okay, getting them into this police department early on. Okay. As teens of color, we both have brothers, and the older they get, the older they get, the more we worry about them. Even just to go out on a jog alone, what can you do as police to help protect them? I'll go. Another great question. So I have a teenage son, right? And there are conversations that your dad would have to have, have feel like they have to have with their son that I don't have to have with mine. And that's hurtful, right? So the first thing we have to do is understand as a profession that that's a problem, okay? And we are. But I don't think we're good enough at explaining to the public what we're doing, right? Um, so one of the things that's come up uh, recently is uh, implicit bias training. Okay, I, I took it when I was in Alexandria. We're in the process of bringing it here. When you talk about implicit biases, we all have them. And we have to recognize that we have them. We have to stop saying, I don't have a bias, or you don't have a bias, or you have to recognize what those biases are, right? And that comes down to training and, and understanding it. So we need to do better at training that, okay? And remember, with our Constitution, you, they serve us, right? You understand? But there's a mutual respect, a man-to-man -man respect, a man-to-woman respect. So when, just in my past history, getting pulled over, I never feel like you guys were serving us. And when you said that there were 30 vacant slots for employment with you guys, 30, 30 applications, applications and two vacants, the reason that there's no minorities on there, because we have been conditioned to believe that we're guilty until proven innocent, so I will never call you guys first. And that's a problem. And that's we can't focus. We can be mindful and we can send our hopes and prayers all around the world, but we can only fix what we can control, and it starts right here. And I am open, I am open personally, and I've been doing so the past years with young minorities in this town that when you guys arrive, they run. And I'm like, what are you guys running for? Shouldn't be running. Biggest issue with me. Right? Yeah, I, I agree. Two, I have two young black kings that I'm raising. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is. He's ready too. Yes. <laughs> and I want to be able to live my life comfortably yeah. within my control and know that officer riding behind me. I'm legit on everything across the board, but I'm so paranoid because for a black man and me seeing us get killed every other day in history, right. don't have a record, never been locked up a day in my life. Family man, beautiful wife, beautiful black wife, beautiful young kings. So with that being said, I'm gonna finish on this note. I got judged that way, I got conditioned that way my whole life to believe I am who I associate myself with. So when I see badges, look what we see all around the world from other sure. officers. You are who you associate yourself with. Right. So you guys have to make a major, or take a major step to move us in the right direction. And I feel like Warrington is a home base to start something special. Oh yeah. So that's I it. That. Hey, so that, that, you have my card. Come by this week and let's talk. Yep. Yeah, we do that. Seriously, let's, let's talk. No I'll give you a call. Because if, if we don't, then, then all this is is talk, right? Psalm 73. The psalmist, confused and upset about injustice. Verse 16 says, When I tried to understand all this, it seemed hopeless until I entered God's sanctuary. Come fill this place. Come. Fill
side.